Wouldn't it be better if a tool can auto transcribe an audio or video file, but also really importantly, automatically detect speakers, in other words, also called speaker diarization -ization. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the tool WhisperX. Many of you also suggested that it would be great to have the speaker detection function, and I personally totally agree. So when I found out that WhisperX can accomplish this, I can't wait to share this with all of you here. So WhisperX not only can add speaker detection functionalities, but it also can be five or four times faster than Whisper AI in processing of video files. So it will be really handy if you have a multi-hour long interview or you just had a long conference call and you'll be able to transcribe everything in the past, maybe one hour down to just 10 minutes. And that's the second reason. The third one is it Whisper X offers even better accuracy on timestamps. So let's dive in. Whisper X is an open source model and it's built on top of OpenAI's Whisper AI model and the Pi and Note model hosted on Hugging Face, which is also open source. However, to access the Pi and Note model on Hugging Face, we'll need to first set up a Hugging Face account, create a access token, plus we need to find the two models under Pi Anode that WhisperX draws from and, and accept their terms. I know it may sound a little bit complicated, but the good thing is once you set it up, you do not need to worry about it ever. So plus today, I'm going to get you through step by step. First step, if you have not created a Hugging Face account, let's first create a Hugging Face account. Now just go to huggingface.c and follow the steps to create your account. It will be really straightforward. And once you've created your Hugging Face account, you will see this interface. Then you need to go to these profile icon, click on it, and go down to access tokens, click on it, and click on create new token. So in today's task, we only need to choose read, and then you can just say whisper X and click on create token. And then this is your unique token. Be really careful here. Do not share this token with anybody else. And we wanted to copy this password and save it to use in Google Colab. And following up, we need to find the two machine learning models under Pi Anode that enable WhisperX to detect speakers automatically and label them accordingly. And don't worry, I will list all the links shared in this video down in the description section below. So let's first go to the speaker diarization ization model here. Now, if it's your first time visiting this model's page, it will require you to agree in their terms, which just means you need to enter your company, university if you're a student, and website. If you're just using the model for personal usage, it's okay to just write down your name and your personal website here and click on agree and access repository. Then you're down for this one. Similarly, let's go to the other model that we need in order for WhisperX to detect speakers. And then this we need the second model under Pi Anno we need is the segmentation model. Again, I will have the link down in the description section below. Similarly, you can just set up your company or university name and your website and click on agree and access repository. It's really important because these two models require you to agree with their terms before you can access them through your Hugging Face token. And just click on agree and access repository. And that's all you need to do setting up the two models. Make the two models ready with your Hugging Face account and create a Hugging Face token. Now we go back to Google Drive because we're going to create a Google Colab doc. And if you have never used Google Colab before, you're welcome to check out this video here where I have a very detailed step-by-step -step process guiding you through how to create a Google Colab document. So go to Google Drive and create a new Colab account. You know, it's whatever you want. For example, whisper X transcribe. Okay. 
And the first thing is we wanted to make sure we changed the runtime by clicking on runtime and change runtime. Make sure we select T4 GPU. And the first step, we need to install the Whisper X model from GitHub. You can just copy by using this line of code. Now, don't worry if you have never coded before. I have all the codes written in the description below this video, but I do think it's better to have a basic understanding of what this code does. So this code is just telling Google Colab to install the Whisper X model from this website. And hyphen Q here is just to tell Google Colab not to show all the gigantic amount of processing text and let's click on the run button to run it. All right, it took only 10 seconds to complete. Let's just click on plus code to add a new code block. And second line of code, we're gonna install the Hugging Face package so that we can use our Hugging Face token and access the Pi Anode model. Click on run, right? And then the third thing we need to install and don't worry, there are only three things we need to install. It's the libqt NNA model here. Now, we don't need to get super technical here, but I do want you to know which line does what in general. This one requires WhisperX to run their model on a GPU more efficiently. And you can think of it as a GPU accelerator. Click on run. So this one took a little bit longer, 55 seconds to complete installing. As of now, we have installed three different packages. Number one, the WhisperX pulled directly from GitHub. And number two, the Hugging Face package so that we can access Hugging Face models, which enables WhisperX to automatically detect speakers. And number three, the LibQt NNA model that allows WhisperX to smoothly run on a GPU model. Think of it as an accelerator. Now, the most exciting part and also the line last code for today's tutorial. And before that, first we need to load in our source document, which is an audio or video file you wanted to transcribe and also have the diarization function. So first we need to click on, on the left side, the file icon. Now it's really easy. You can just drag your audio or video file you wanted to transcribe directly here. Now, I am going to use a 10 minute test video. So it will give a warning here telling you that the file will be deleted when this runtime is terminated. So it's really important here to remember when the transcripts document is generated, make sure you download it right after. Okay, so it's even easier. I'm gonna rename it to just test.mp3. Now see here, it takes a little bit of time to load your source file. And depending on how long your source file is, it can take even longer. So just be a little bit patient and also wait here. Do not leave your computer when your computer is uploading your source file because sometimes when your computer goes to sleep, you have to redo everything again. So that will be really annoying. In order to demo the diarization function, I pulled a segment of the audio from my interview with the CEO of Free Code Camp, Quincy Larson. Uh, I need you to check out that podcast video episode right here. So in this MP3 file, we'll have two speakers. And let's see if WhisperX can correctly label that. Okay, very, very last line of code for today's tutorial. You see, we're calling WhisperX and we're choosing the large V2 model, which is a very appropriate model for tasks like transcribing up to a few hours video, audio, and chunk size here, six, meaning how long do you want each line of transcription to be? So here the default section or many people would choose is six seconds. So that just means every line transcription text will match about six seconds of audio. And hyphen hyphen here, we tell WhisperX that we want speaker diarization rization. We need you to label the speakers so we can easily identify different people's speeches in the same audio or video file. And here, hyphen hyphen face token. Now, very importantly here, remember we just created a hugging face access token. Now, we need to do a space 
and copy over the entire string uh, token here. Okay, so my token, and by the time this video is uploaded and you can view it, I will already have deleted this access token. So please remember to replace this with your own hugging face token. All right, and after that, a space, we tell the model which file we need it to transcribe and diarize. In my case today, it's the test.mp3 file. And obviously you can choose whatever you want. You can process .wav, .mp4, and many other types of video and audio files. I hope if some of you have never coded before, you're not getting intimidated by coding. And after watching this tutorial, you feel more confident using coding to accomplish your daily tasks. Let's run this line of code. So after about two minutes, it's completed the whole process, which is, I think is pretty impressive. You can have a quick preview of the transcriptions in the processing window right below. And you can see here performing alignment and performing diarization rization. So everything worked out, hopefully. Now you can see on the left hand side, five different versions of the transcription files have been generated. Now let's just open one of the most common ones, SRT file. Do remember to download all of them. Obviously, whichever files you need right after is always a good practice. Let's double click here. Oh, so it worked. You see in the video, I know that it's me and Quincy in this podcast interview. So it labeled speaker 00, 00 and also speaker 01 in each segment is about six seconds. So going back to chunk size six. And then so now you know how to modify this code if you want longer or shorter chunk size. And what does that mean? Let's also open um, if just the different types of subtitle files. It also successfully labeled different speakers. And if you have multiple speakers in the files, it should be able to automatically detect the different speakers. So it's not just limited to few speakers. So it's very convenient and powerful. After today's tutorial, I hope you gain more confidence using these code based tools and you got a sense of how powerful these tools can be. And on top of that, they're open source and completely free. So if you enjoyed today's tutorial, I hope you like and subscribe to my channel and share this video to anybody you think might benefit from watching it. And please do share your feedback, questions, or new topics you want me to cover down in the comment section below. See you next time.